Hello, Mohammed. Good to see you on this virtual platform of online festival itfs.de. Thanks very much for joining and maybe you introduce yourself and uh, explain a bit how you came into animation and what is your background and yes, that's what I want to hear. So, uh, thank you for uh, this invitation uh, of uh, Stuttgart uh, Animation Film Festival. Uh, I, uh, I consider myself as uh, uh, an old friend of, of the festival since uh, around uh, 10 or more years uh, since I've I, I been selected as jury member and uh, later I have to make some programs with, with your team. And I'm, I'm really proud that Stuttgart, one of those biggest animation festival in the world to, to celebrate animation from our region since long time. Um, uh, so I, I start my, uh, about myself. Uh, my name is Mohammed Ghazal. I'm from Egypt. Uh, I studied animation uh, in fine arts school of Minya University. Later on, I, I continue my studies as uh, making my bachelor uh, and MFA as in my BSV and a direct animation technique and uh, uh, experimental animation. Uh, later on, my, my way as educator uh, took me to a different uh, area to study the history of animation from my uh, region, especially from Africa and Middle East. And uh, I found that uh, a lot of those um, historical reference of animation, uh, international ones, are lacking a lot of those animation history from uh, Africa, especially. And uh, since uh, maybe 2005, I started my uh, in-depth research about uh, uh, animation from our continent. And uh, I discovered a lot of uh, new uh, information which never been uh, mentioned in any historical uh, uh, books about so, animation, uh, so especially the first edition. So what is uh, the special thing with African animation? Because you are really digging very uh, deep into the ground and uh, African animation is not very visible, but it's, get, it's getting more and more visible. So what are your results of the research? You also published a book. Yeah, uh, uh, what I can tell you, what is uh, uh, linked to our current time now, that we, are, we should celebrate in, in 2020, the 85th anniversary of Animation Africa, uh, celebrating the first uh, public screening of uh, any animation uh, in, in the continent uh, since 1935, when group of uh, uh, animators or artists from uh, Belarusia came to Egypt in, two, in, in, in early 19th and uh, they start to work and they immigrated from uh, the wars at time and they stayed in Egypt uh, until the time of middle of 30s and they created the first animation film ever made in Africa even it wasn't uh, even though it wasn't made by an African animator but still it's made in Africa so uh, and the content was uh, African or speaking about the current uh, situation uh, uh, during the World War II uh, uh, in 1935 until, uh, until that later on. So they have made plenty of films, short films. Uh, uh, they, they called uh, Frankel Brothers. Uh, it was a family who immigrated and they, they tried to uh, integrate with the Egyptian community by creating a films reflecting the Egyptian society. Later on in my research, I discovered that uh, many, not only Egypt was the, was the pioneer of animation in Africa, but also some individual in the initiatives happening in, in, in several African countries, especially in, in sub-Saharan uh, African countries like uh, Niger, uh, was the main name of uh, Mustafa Lassan uh, from Niger. He was uh, the first. He was in Stuttgart, I yeah, think. He, uh, yeah, he was. Seventy-five. He was seventy-five. So, he, like, he was a kind of pioneer, right? Yeah, 
No, he even he even started uh, his first film was in 1965. Yeah, 65. Yeah, this is this was uh, really uh, uh, very early, especially uh, his country just get independence from France, and before that time exactly, uh, the colonization forbidden for any uh, black African or any uh, indigenous uh, African person to carry a camera because this was a kind of uh, a way to express themselves and it was forbidden for them to express themselves by any mean, especially uh, film or in even drawing or writing. So uh, the film and animation was the first way to express themselves especially the life after independence. I mean, in 1960, uh, a lot of African countries get independence, especially sub-Saharan. Around, around 40 countries get independence, like uh, France and uh, Britain uh, and Belgium. They get out of Africa at that time. It was uh, especially after uh, uh, the, the Suez War. So, you know, the separation between uh, between uh, East and West and a lot of different political changes. So uh, in 1960, a lot of African countries, uh, countries get independence and start to get uh, moves uh, and waves of African filmmakers who studied uh, maybe abroad or who tried to create their own methods to, uh, to shoot film or to write or to animate. Mustafa Alassane was uh, uh, educated by a French pro-African uh, filmmaker who, uh, who came to Africa and he started to invest in, in teaching uh, African uh, um, people how to draw or how to shoot film. So later on, Mustafa uh, communicated with Norman McLaren. Yeah. In, in Canada, in Nas a National Film Board uh, in Canada to, to help him. He, I think, uh, he sent him some resources to, to start to shoot films. And I believe uh, after uh, many years, Mustafa Hassan became a very inspiring person to many African in, in, uh, in East, West, and South Africa uh, to make their own films uh, representing their own countries and their own culture which and were how, how very uh, ignored. Now? So uh, in the 60s, the uh, bigger movement starts, uh, but how is the situation now? We know from South Africa, they have a, like a, a big animation industry, but in smaller countries like Zimbabwe, there's something going on, but um, I think the whole situation is quite diverse and, and different. How is the situation with African animation today and how uh, maybe you are in touch with some African animators, how, how do they react on the pandemic at the moment? Uh, yeah, I, I would tell you the, uh, the sector of animation would be the least uh, sector of any visual arts in the world that get affected by the pandemic. I mean, uh, we all use uh, digital uh, application and we are communicating where we are doing our main animation uh, projects through computer. We are not carrying that much cameras outside in the streets or, or jumping on, on forests or anywhere. We are just uh, stuck to our studios and we are animating on our computer. Or if we are doing stop motion, we are having this in our studio. So uh, you don't need much space or to, you need to get out. So uh, I believe many animators around the world and not only in Africa get uh, benefit of concentration on, uh, on their laptops or their computer or studios to, to finish their own projects. Uh, as I'm following many animators uh, in Africa, I found uh, many of them engaged in international competitions of, of uh, African animation or, or uh, uh, sending their films everywhere in Africa in, in, uh, in animation film festivals or film festivals. And uh, many of them are uh, gaining uh, uh, like appreciation or even awards uh, around the world. Yeah, last last uh, two weeks uh, we have one film from uh, South Africa, Cape Town, uh, from uh, Trigger Fish uh, Studio again uh, 
uh, an award, Emmy Award for uh, for the film of Zug, and uh, this this was uh, one of the main uh, international awards received by uh, received for uh, African animator uh, by uh, an African South African animator uh, Daniel Snadden, and uh, I believe many of our colleagues in Nigeria or Mali or Kenya are doing a lot of. Um, promotions and films uh, to represent the issue of pandemic uh, or coronavirus pandemic in, in several uh, countries. I, I am following what is happening. I, I, every day I receive uh, maybe short films, uh, animation films from Ethiopia, from Nigeria, from Kenya to educate people how to uh, to be aware of this pandemic or how to deal with this uh, issue. So I believe that the African animators are up to date like following the trends. Now, almost everyone can have access to his uh, software or application to animate. Okay. It's not issue. The animation software you are using in Germany is the same. I can download it and use it in Mozambique or in, in Namibia. And uh, the same laptop, it's a question of time to order it from uh, China or from wherever. It's a question of time and money. Now the investment in, in media in, in the whole Africa is quite a lot. I mean, uh, people and government and companies are aware of, of the value of media and promotion and marketing. Uh, uh, maybe this change uh, during the last 10 years after, the, after people watching the result and the feedback and the effect of uh, social media during the Arab Spring, so we have seen that uh, a lot of those movements, a lot of uh, changes happening because people are following frequently social media and they get affected immediately. Like people get ordered, okay, let's go outside in the streets. So uh, within hours, people are outside. So the value of social media, value of media itself become uh, big and bigger than before during Wait. the last 10 years only. Great. So, so let's change the, the topic. You are the chair um, of, um, at the moment, visual and digital production, but I heard uh, that you will have a new name at the Effort University in Saudi Arabia, in, in Cheddar. So I think it's in Saudi Arabia, there's a huge transformation going on. I heard the first cinema has reopened uh, um, since 35 years. So could you yeah. explain a little bit about um, the studies, who is studying there, how many students, and um, yeah, the, the courses, and, and maybe later on we can watch a film from your students. Okay. So uh, I, I get invited by Effort University, the, the pioneer uh, female uh, uh, university of Saudi Arabia, uh, it's considered to be the first female uh, school, uh, college, and university in the whole uh, kingdom of Saudi Arabia since uh, 1950s. I mean, it was a school and then transformed it to be a college, and now it's one of the pioneer uh, uh, universities. Uh, in 2013, uh, uh, there was uh, an initiative by uh, Princess Lulu Al Faisal uh, Al Saud. She is uh, uh, the, may, the general uh, supervisor of the university, and she is a daughter of King Faisal uh, of 1970s uh, of Saudi Arabia. And uh, the family is, is quite uh, concerned about the education and about the effect of education of uh, girls and uh, the reflection of, of uh, education on the woman uh, life and the family and uh, their concern uh, were about how to educate here to to contribute and building uh, the country and how to uh, inspire uh, the society to be uh, proactive towards uh, modernism and uh, how to be uh, more uh, uh, like within the international standard of, of quality of life and uh, education and everything. So in, in 2012, the uh, Brancis went to uh, University of Southern California uh, to check about their cinematic art uh, 
uh, school and to, to see uh, how we would adopt uh, such model in, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And uh, there were a long discussion how to, to create such model in, in, uh, in the country. And in 2013, uh, we get the approval from the Minister of Education to accept uh, starting a new program called Visual and Digital Production. Until that time, cinema was absolutely uh, banned and uh, not welcomed by the government. And, uh, uh, but, uh, and it seemed like uh, the title of cinema or film wasn't that uh, welcomed. And uh, for this, the, the university decided to, to have a title which would be accepted. It's something about media, about uh, uh, documentary, about uh, how to communicate. So later on in 2013, we start to, uh, to receive the first students uh, coming to the visual and digital production department. We have it with four tracks. Uh, one, uh, the first track is film production, second track animation, uh, interactive media track, and uh, screenwriting tracks. So all of them uh, would uh, help to create a filmmaker like uh, someone to fill uh, or to create a content about uh, uh, film or games or, or to create a script. So uh, since then, uh, it was like seven years or eight years since then, uh, we have many students joining the program and we have a lot of uh, faculty from around the world. We get uh, educators from America, from Korea, from Malaysia, from Egypt. Uh, from Jordan, uh, we, we are from Morocco now, and we, we have a lot of people are coming to educate the, the students in several tracks. And uh, during the time, and after 2018, we get the approval of the, um, uh, the government to, to allow cinema opening for first time since 35 years. I mean, since that time, uh, in the 70s, late 70s, there were uh, cinema in the country. But during the uh, many political issues in the Middle East, people uh, or the, the government would change its vision about uh, the community and how to deal with several issues. And cinema was one of those um, uh, uh, aspects affected by this. So uh, the, the, the university decided to help and, and, uh, and develop a bunch of people or, uh, or students or alumni to help in creating the new image of the country. And uh, every time uh, the country is, is uh, like suffering of uh, stereotyping. I mean, the image of, of the country is always about uh, fundamentals or fanatics or Bedouin people or uneducated people. So, you feel like uh, uh, the country is not reflected uh, uh, honestly or fairly on media okay. or through films or through, uh, yeah, all the time they are not that good people. While uh, when you come, it's, it's absolutely a different image and the society is quite uh, different than the image you have before. You, you have to come. To, uh, to understand the value and uh, the quality of society and uh, uh, traditions, which is, is absolutely respected everywhere, but the representation of this is not honest enough. Great. So, yeah. so thanks very much for the, the insights. Indeed, um, there would be much more to talk, but it's really good to see that a new generation of young female animators are coming from Saudi Arabia. And next year in Stuttgart, we will show a full program from the uh, Effort University and bring also students uh, to Stuttgart to exchange with their colleagues. So thanks very much for your talk and your insights. Uh, it really looks uh, very, very, uh, yeah, hopeful what's going on in, in, in Saudi Arabia in these uh, difficult times. And now we'll, we'll watch a film um, um, called Social Modes Manual. Uh, I choose it, uh, it's by yeah. Ragat al -Barki, And I think it's a really nice film. And so thanks again yeah. and see you next year, Mohamed. Bye.
Thank you very much. Thank you always. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>